I have had it with Ticketmaster. I have been sitting here for three hours trying to get registered for the pre-sale. We got sticker price for every single seat and we had no issues getting tickets for any of them. I was able to get floor seats at the Rose Bowl in LA for about $200 each. With this tour, I am a little bit nervous because of the high demand. Another really important thing to note, Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, it's Nina. If you are new here, welcome, I'm so happy to have you. And if you're not new, thanks for coming back. Today we are talking about everything you need to know when buying tickets to a Taylor Swift tour. Last week, Taylor Swift announced that she is going back out on tour next summer, starting in March and ending in August for her US tour. The international dates have not been announced yet. She said she will announce them soon, but this tour is called the Taylor Swift the Eras Tour. I just wanted to come on here and make a video about this process because I think a lot of people are stressed out about it, thinking they're not gonna get tickets, but I'm here to tell you that it's not gonna be as stressful as you thought and that you should not be too worried because there's gonna be a lot of opportunities for everybody to come see the show and the tour and it's gonna be just wonderful. As somebody who has spent the last two tour cycles, minus like love or not happening, getting tickets and going through all of the Ticketmaster process and all of that. Now, I think when she had announced mid Midnights, I assumed she would just be touring midnights, but before that I totally thought that she was gonna do something like this and maybe call it like the Taylor's version tour, but this seems to be a tour that's gonna be celebrating her entire body of work all the way from the debut album up until midnights. And again, Ticketmaster is going to be running the verified fan pre-sale just like they did for Reputation Tour and Loverfest. So the registration for the pre-sale opened last Tuesday on November 1st and it will be closing this coming Wednesday the 9th and Ticketmaster had said last Tuesday that it doesn't matter what order people sign up in and that it didn't give you higher priority if you signed up sooner than somebody else as long as you sign up before November 9th. I don't know how that whole thing is gonna work because I signed up a couple days after the Harry Styles pre-sale opened and I got waitlisted. So I don't know if that was just because the demand was so high and he was playing smaller venues that I got waitlisted for the Harry Styles verified fan thing, but they have said that it doesn't matter and that everyone has an equal chance of getting a pre-sale code. And if the amount of people that signed up exceeds the amount of pre-sale slots that they have for the codes, that people will be chosen at random and other people will be waitlisted. They've also said that signing up for the pre-sale does not guarantee that you'll be able to buy tickets, but this is all things I think they have to say, like just so that they cover all their bases. I personally don't think it's going to be impossible to get tickets to this tour or as hard as we think it's gonna be since she's playing such large venues, there's a lot of shows, and also I think this pre-sale registration process, just like she had for the reputation tour, the more people signed up, then they could get a head count of the demand and then add more dates. And so I think they always plan on adding dates and they leave room, but they just wanna make sure that they have enough people signing up to fill those dates. And so a few days after she announced the tour and opened the pre-sale registration, they came out saying that they were adding, I don't know how many extra shows, but they were adding more shows in the high demand areas, adding a show to LA, Santa Clara, New York, just a bunch of places, which I knew was gonna happen, so I wasn't too worried. And so there should be a good chance for everybody that wants to go that can go, because during Reputation, I know this was like five years ago, and also the demand is much, much higher now since she's gained a lot bigger of a fan base from Folklore Evermore, and you know, she's just been like putting out so much music lately. Like two weeks before Reputation, my two friends bought tickets in the Upper Bowl, and they were sticker price at $99 a ticket, and they could still go to the Reputation Tour in LA like two weeks before they were able to buy tickets for it. So I'm not too worried. I think that it's not gonna completely sell out. Like these stadiums are huge and I'll get to more about like the seat and the stage and like all of that later. When I went to register on Tuesday, I think everybody was having a struggle and just wanted to like break their computer in half because Ticketmaster, they're never prepared for the volume of people that are gonna get on there and register and buy tickets and everything because I sat on my computer trying to get registered for hours. I think maybe three or four hours. It was just very frustrating and I know that they said it doesn't matter and I, that you could wait out the storm and then register 
later, but like I was just stressed out and I wanted to be like, know that I was already registered. So we did sit there. Me and all of my friends were texting, kind of trying to get it signed up. So I recorded that process. So let's roll the clip. Hello guys. Y'all, I have had it with Ticketmaster. I have been personally victimized so many times. I was supposed to be editing my video and putting it up today, but I have not been able to focus on literally anything else. I have been sitting here for three hours trying to get registered for the pre-sale for the Taylor Swift Eras tour, if you didn't know. Apparently everybody knows because everybody is on here trying to get registered, but I've been stuck on this screen, this screen for about an hour. Ticketmaster refuses to send me my code to verify my phone number and finish my registration. Oh, I got another code. I keep getting sent a bunch of codes because I keep requesting more. Will this be the one? No, it's not the one. I keep getting an error message and then I have to redo it. Then we're back on here. But essentially, you if you already have a Ticketmaster account and had bought Taylor Swift tickets to Loverfest, you should be in like a priority group, which that would be me because I did buy tickets to Loverfest and Reputation and I both had verified fan presale. So I'm really banking on that helping me here. But I swear, if I don't get tickets to this tour, I am going to literally freak out. You know, usually it ends up working out because for Loverfest, we were pretty stressed out about it, but this is so much bigger and there's so many more people on here trying to get tickets because everyone's a Taylor Swift fan now, apparently can't gatekeep her anymore she's literally like the biggest artist ever so it makes sense um oh got another code perfect okay now we're back to the original screen love that also i think this tour is going to be so special there's so many different openers too for all these different shows um i'm really excited for gracie abrams phoebe bridgers it's going to be really cool to see them open and honestly because she's playing such big shows in stadiums, she's able to keep the ticket prices at a decent level, unlike Harry Styles, who his tickets were so, so expensive because it was at the Forum, which is a really small venue. She's playing SoFi, which fits something like 90,000 people or something. So if we have to get upper bowl seats for some of these shows, so be it. It'll be between like, they've put out kind of like the price ranges. It's gonna be like 49 to $100 for the upper bowl, like up and up from there. But I think we might ball out for the pit. I don't know guys, it's Taylor Swift. It's literally my entire person to be a Taylor Swift fan. But anyways, this is the update. I'll let you guys know if I get registered, but it's not looking good. Registration doesn't end until November 9th. Um, I'm having flashbacks of Loverfest, but anyways, it's gonna be fine. The spinning wheel of death. I literally can't do this anymore. I waited almost an hour for a text verification code and I finally got it and I plugged it in and now I'm, I'm back at the back of the freaking line. This is insane. I'm gonna throw hands. We're going on like four hours of this shit. I'm done. Well guys, we did it. We are registered officially. Thank the Lord. We are registered for the tour. Thank God. And now we have to wait until the literal day before the pre-sale to figure out if we even get a code, which is great. So stay tuned. This is when we just start praying. <laughs> So as you can see, working with Ticketmaster is not always the most enjoyable experience ever. But once we all got signed up, I was feeling better about everything, especially two days later than when she added more of the tour dates, I felt much better. So now I wanted to talk about the boosts and the priority of people's accounts on Ticketmaster and everything like that. So I'm not ever against like new fans trying to get tickets. Some people are very aggressive about new fans or other fans getting tickets that are just like casual fans of Taylor Swift because there's some people on TikTok being very aggressive towards like the newer fans for not being here since the beginning and not going to the other tours and maybe this is their first time getting concert tickets to Taylor Swift and everything. I have nothing against new fans or anything. It's like we can't gatekeep Taylor Swift. She's literally the most popular artist 
pop artist of all time, but I do like that Ticketmaster is continuing to keep the priority of fans that have bought tickets before and that have dedicated a lot of time and energy to Taylor Swift and her tours and being a fan and everything, you know, like the super fans get a little bit of a boost, which I think is okay. So ever since the Reputation Tour is when they started the Taylor Swift Verified Fan like system and back then it was more of like a portal that you log into and you could watch the music videos, buy merch, buy albums, share on social media and you would get these boosts and so the more you did the more boosts you got the earlier your pre-sale code time slot was so that you could get tickets first and so for the reputation tour I sat there for hours and hours watching the videos on repeat and trying to get as many boosts as I can so I ended up getting the first time slot for the pre-sale because I had signed up for reputation pre-sale and got the code and was a purchaser, that priority also transferred over for when Loverfest tickets went on sale. And so the same priority that you had with that account during reputation was now transferred into Loverfest priority. So there was no longer a portal to get more and more boosts. It was just kind of like you registered for the pre-sale and you were sent a code and people who had gone to the reputation tour with the Ver verified fan pre-sale had a priority automatically. So I had priority for both using the Ticketmaster verified fan system. Now with the Eras tour, they have come out and said that if you were a verified purchaser of lover tickets, that priority is also going to transfer into the Eras tour registration priority, which I am very thankful for and I feel like all of my hard work in the past is paying off now. Especially since this is the Eras Tour. Fans of past and present are coming together trying to get tickets to Taylor Swift. People that were fans of Country Taylor want to come because they're curious about the Eras Tour. Newer fans from Folklore and Evermore want to come to the Eras Tour since she never toured those albums. There's just so many different people coming together here, which is why it's a little stressful and that the demand is so high. Now, similar Similar to the reputation boost system, if you bought merch on there, you would get a boost. And I thought she had done away with that because people complained, obviously, like not everybody can buy merch because it's so expensive. So I got an email from Taylor Nation that I found in my spam folder that told me that I would be getting a boost for purchasing something from the Taylor Swift store. So if you did buy merch or a Midnight's album or vinyl, I would go check your spam email folder if you hadn't got that email already to make sure that you got that email to make sure. Another really important thing to note if you do have this boost is that you have to make sure the email that you use for Taylor Swift's online store is the same email that you registered for the Ticketmaster verified fan pre-sale. So if those two emails aren't the same, you're not going to get the boost. So make sure that you switch the emails so that they are the same. Okay, so moving on, I just wanted to talk about my experience buying tickets for Reputation and Loverfest and kind of how that all went down. And I will say, I I never was like super, super stressed that I wasn't gonna get any tickets because I feel like when I tried to get tickets to Harry Styles, I thought I was just like, I just kind of like gave up because I got waitlisted and then all the tickets were super expensive and like not in my budget at all. But I have never felt like that going into buying tickets for a Taylor Swift tour because Taylor always plays really big stadiums and there's plenty of seats available and she always adds shows. There's just a lot more opportunity, I would say, for anyone to buy tickets for it. So like I said earlier, I got that first time slot for the pre-sale of the rep tour and it was a relatively stress-free process. I was able to get floor seats for both nights at the Rose Bowl in LA for about $200 each. I got a code for the first night. My friend had signed up and got a code for the second night and so that's kind of how we did it. I bought one night, she bought the other night. For each pre-sale code, you had a max of six tickets that you could buy and that's how it was for Lover and that's how it's gonna be for the Eras tour as well. And for Reputation, I also got tickets to the Nashville show in the Upper Bowl for around $60 each and that's because my sister got a code for that show. So we got sticker price for every single seat and we had no issues getting tickets for any of them. And then when it came to Loverfest, it was a little bit more stressful because there was only two shows in LA and those were the only two shows on the west side of the US. So people were coming in from all over trying to get tickets for these two shows. And so I did get priority access for those tickets and I ended up getting tickets for both nights of Loverfest. The first night we were in the lower bowl and the second night we were in the upper bowl and those went from I think between $100 and $150 each. That one was a little bit more stressful just because the demand was high and there was only two shows available on this 
half of the country. And so that's why with this tour, I am a little bit nervous because of the high demand, but there's way more shows and these venues are huge. So I just wanted to go in and tell you guys what my plan is for this tour um, and just share with you what I'm gonna do. And maybe that'll help out you with what you're gonna do. So for this tour, me and my friends basically made a spreadsheet with all of the possible dates and places and shows that we wanted to go to with our budget, who's opening, where we wanna sit, all of that, just because we're crazy. It has been five years since we've been to Taylor Swift and this tour is going to be legendary because it's like all the eras. We wanna go to as many shows as we can with a reasonable budget. So basically there's five of us that signed up for pre-sale registration. Two of us have lover priority that transferred to this tour. I think a couple of us have that merch boost. And then we strategically listed each show preference. So each of us put a different one as our number one so we could get a code to all the shows that we wanna go to. Um, and also, so you ranked them one through three and obviously you have your first preference and then your two additional preferences. This doesn't guarantee guarantee that you'll get a code for every single one of them. You might get one code, you might get two codes, you might get all three codes. I don't know how that's gonna end up. But if there's room, you should be getting those additional codes for the other shows if you put them down as your preference. So we're really gonna try to go to the first show of the tour, which is gonna be in Arizona because it's only like a little five hour road trip from here. And also I've never not known exactly what was gonna happen when I would go to a Taylor Swift concert. I already knew the set list, the outfits, like everything that was gonna happen. So I just thought it would be so fun if we were just surprised with everybody else that was there. And then we're also gonna try to go to one of the San Santa Clara shows because my friend lives up there and we can stay with her. So then we would have a free place to stay, which is half the battle. And of course, we're gonna try to go to at least two of the LA shows because that's technically like our hometown show here. And that's the show I would probably wanna get either floor or pit tickets to because that's just like the last show of the tour. I'm so excited that it's here and that I get to go to that one. That is if we get tickets, which I think we can. There's gonna be three shows in LA. She added one. I think there is a good possibility we can get tickets to at least one or two of them. And then there's a possibility that we will get tickets to the Nashville show because one of our friends lives there as well and I saw the reputation tour in Nashville and it was super super fun to be in technically Taylor Swift's hometown where she got her start and all of these like additional shows we probably just try to get like upper bowl just to be there and those tickets are pretty affordable so now I want to talk about tips for the day of the pre-sale that's gonna be Tuesday November 15th at 10 a.m. local venue time for whatever show that you're getting tickets for so if you were getting tickets to a show on the East Coast that's 10 a.m. Eastern time and then if you're to the LA show, it's gonna be 10 a.m. Pacific time. So that's kind of how that works. So being on the West Coast, I get to see how the ticket situation is going on on the East Coast before my tickets go on sale. So I'm kind of excited to see how that situation is, if it's going well, if it's not as stressful as everyone thought, like, you know, like are people getting the tickets they want, all that kind of stuff. So I'm glad we kind of have that advantage. But the first thing I will say is make sure that all of your payment information is uploaded to your Ticketmaster account and that the card that you're going to be paying the, for the tickets with is already uploaded into your account. Maybe add an extra one just in case it doesn't work or you're having trouble with it just in case because we don't know how quickly the tickets are gonna go. So you just wanna make sure you wanna limit the time it's gonna take you to get from the choosing the ticket process to the payment process to securing your tickets. You just don't wanna have to worry about typing in your credit card number or anything like that. So make sure your payment information is updated and ready to go. This might be one of the most important things. Make sure you are signed in on only only one device with your Ticketmaster account. Don't sign in on your phone and your computer, just sign in on your computer because if you're signed in on multiple devices, Ticketmaster could cancel your session or kick you out or and you'll have to like re-wait in line and like all of that kind of stuff and so you don't wanna risk it. Also, just don't refresh your page at all if you're trying to purchase your tickets and it's loading, just kind of be patient and try not to freak out because again, if you're refreshing the page it could completely like release your tickets and someone could scoop them up make sure you've set aside a significant amount of time to do the pre-sale get there early 10 15 minutes or more early just like have it up ready to go you don't want to be stressed out waiting you'll be put into a waiting room and then eventually you get in 
put in that pre-sale code and you get those tickets. This is something I saw on TikTok that is important if you were getting tickets to the first show in Arizona or Arlington, Texas show. Those two stadiums have a partnership with SeatGeek and so you will not be purchasing through Ticketmaster, but Ticketmaster is still gonna be where you're gonna get the code from. So they're gonna email you with a code through the verified fan thing. And if you get a code for Arizona or that Texas show, you are going to take the code and go get redirected to SeatGeek and that's where you're gonna put the code in. So make sure that either a SeatGeek account or your information for payment is connected to that. Make sure you're ready for that because I don't think a lot of people know that Ticketmaster isn't the only place that you can buy tickets on um, for this tour at least. So I will be doing that since I'm trying to go to the Arizona show. Also, if you are purchasing tickets for this, they will also have the Capital One pre-sale for those two shows as well. So speaking of the Capital One pre-sale, that's the you know credit card company pre-sale, that is going to happen at 2 p.m. local time. So we have the Verified Fan pre-sale at 10 a.m. and then a few hours later at 2 p.m. is gonna open up for the Capital One. So maybe if you didn't get tickets or as good of tickets for the Verified fan pre-sale or a code that you wanted maybe if you have a connection or you have a capital one card so I have a few more little things I want to talk about before I wrap up this video but the next thing I wanted to talk about was the stage and kind of like the orientation of the arena um, a lot of people are saying that if you are planning on getting specific seats just go look at another event that's happening there look at the sections look up pictures from each section like the view so you know exactly what view you're gonna be getting if you want to be closer to the main stage or the B stage, but we've seen a couple different rumors of how the stage is going to be set up. Some of them have the stage on one side with a long catwalk, and then one of them has the stage in the middle with a couple B stages, which I feel like I think she's going to have a center stage instead of what she's done in the past and just having it on the side, because if you have a center stage, you can open up so much more of the seats to be purchased. They make more money as the artists, and also more fans get to buy tickets to the show. And this has been something that more and more artists are doing lately. Ed Sheeran's stadium tour has a center stage and the entire arena is filled with people and they call it playing in the round. And Harry Styles does this too, where he has the entire floor kind of be general admission and then he's got the entire rest of the stadium open for seating. So I think that's probably the direction she's gonna go with this, but I guess we won't know for sure until we go in to the pre-sale maybe, I don't know. And it just seems like a very Taylor Swift thing to do to have one center stage and then B stages so that she can, you know, everyone has a good view of part of the concert and it's just like, you know, you get a different experience at each area and location of the concert. And as someone who sat in multiple different places at a Taylor Swift concert, I have had an amazing time wherever I am. I'm just happy to be there most of the time. I had just as good of a time sitting in the upper bowl of the Reputation Tour as I did in the floor on the fourth row. I think it's really cool to experience the show from different places in the arena. I really like in the upper bowl where you can see all the lights and you can really get like a, a wide lens view of the concert. When I was on the floor, I got a really great view of the main stage, but when she went over to the B stages, I could barely see her at all. So it honestly just like, you get a different experience wherever you are, which is why I think a lot of people go to the show multiple times. And also, I'm not sure if this concert is going to be like, each show is going to be a little bit different than the next, you know? Especially since her discography and ca song catalog are just so large now, she couldn't possibly play even a fraction of the songs that she has out. So she'll probably be switching in and out of a lot of songs, maybe. I don't know. So lastly, let's talk about the price range. So they've come out and said that tickets, um, normal price tickets are going to be 49 to I think they said 199 and then they said the VIP tickets are going to range from 199 to 499 and so that's at first what they came out with but th since then I think they've come out and said the prices may vary due to demand increase in demand or something so I think the prices are going to be very similar to what they were for Reputation and Loverfest at least that's what I'm hoping overall I think those tickets were very reasonably priced 
list. I mean, I paid $200 each for floor seats at the rep tour, and then I think I paid close to like $150 or $200 a seat for the lower bowl for Loverfest. Not that those aren't expensive because they are a good amount of money, but I look at other artists like Harry Styles and those tickets are just insanely expensive. So I think these are pretty reasonable. And if you want to just get an upper bowl ticket, you just want to be there, it's going to be probably around $50 to $100. But anyways, I think that's all I have for you guys. I am so excited. Please comment down below if you are going to try to get tickets for the tour. Let me know which show you guys are trying to get tickets for or are gonna go to um, maybe we can all meet up somewhere that would be really fun to meet some of you guys because I'm sure I'll see you guys out there on tour anyways I hope this was helpful for you guys subscribe to my channel for more Taylor Swift there's probably gonna be much more to come with this new album and this new tour that's coming out I can't wait to start planning my costumes so let me know if you want me to do a video about that and I'll see you guys in the next video bye